Hi, I'm Stevie Fernandez. And I'm Trish Whitmer. We're so happy that you took the time to hang out with us for this week's Explore Tulsa. When there's so many other fun things you could be doing. Just what would you be doing if you weren't here today? I'd probably be trying to talk my buddy Charlie Wallace into taking me out wake surfing in his new boat. Well, I did you one better. I convinced him to take us all out on Grand Lake and show us how his new boat works. The old boat, when we were trying to figure out how to wave it, how to, how to create that wave, we didn't know, so we of course invite all our friends. But one day a friend of mine had a great big ice chest um, and, and we thought, well, let's just throw that on there for extra weight. We literally had to take ropes and lash it to the kind of the back hatch in the side of the boat to create a lane. Well, of course, we looked so redneck and, and all of our neighbors were giving us a hard time about this big old ice chest on the back. It was so big, we called it the coffin. Um, we, we were well known around Honey Creek and Grand Lake for the big ugly ice chest. You start down in the water, um, the board is perpendicular to the boat, and so it, it just seems like, how on earth am I going to do this? But you put your feet on um, the very back of it and the very front, and whenever the boat starts to pull you, because your hands are on the rope at this point, you push down with your ankles, or your heels, and the board just kind of flips up and just gets right on your, uh, on your feet. There you just lean you uh, when when you lean on your front foot, it'll it acts like the gas. So you go forward on the wave, and when you lean back, it increases the friction, and so it you go backwards on the wave. And then if you lean on your toes, you go towards the center of the wave, and then on your heels, it's back out into the open water. If you're that close to the boat, it would be dangerous to swim behind a normal boat that has a propeller sticking back there. You need an inboard motor of some sort. Typically, that's going to be a a a wakeboard style of boat. This is a 2016, brand new, uh, Malibu. It's a wake setter. It's the 25 LSV. It's a brand new model for them, and it's the biggest boat they make. So my old boat was a 2004, so it didn't have a lot of the big built-in hard tanks. It had some tanks, but they were smaller. They were made more for wake boarding, because that was popular back in 04, but wake surfing had not really taken off. So this has an adjustable wedge on the back. That's The adjustable wedge is the real in my opinion, that's the thing that separates the Malibu from everybody else. Nobody else has a wedge that drops down below the water. I mean, a lot of people have stuff back there, but this one pictured it's like a big hydrofoil that drops into the water, and it's like a plow dragging the back of the boat down. And it really makes a difference because you want to, you want to while you're running, the more you can kind of get your boat sunk down the water, the, the larger of a wave you're going to create, and the better the surface. Well, the first time I got up on this boat, as opposed to the old boat that we had, I was just like completely startled. Like it's like a massive wave was about to go over me, like a tsunami. I was like so very surprised. If we have it done right, I'm usually surfing a wave that is coming pretty much to my waist. Um, if you're, you know, sometimes a little bigger and sometimes a little smaller, depending on what you're trying to do. The wave is very, very smooth. It's a, it's very nice to surf off of. I like it a lot. Um, the old boat was is. A little sketchy looking but how much it leans. Sometimes the water went over a little bit, but this one it just seems like it's perfectly stable and has no problems that I'm aware of. That's the cool thing about this boat. It's got this armband and there are three different things you can adjust while you're on the armband. You can adjust the speed of your boat, you can switch which side the surf gates go to, in other words which side the surf's on, and you can adjust that wave um, through the wedge while you're there. Typically when you're back there riding a ski or a wakeboard, you're not interacting whatsoever with the people in the boat. You're just doing the sport and they're watching or they're talking amongst themselves. When you're surfing, you're so close to the boat and you're only, only going 10 and a half miles an hour that you're literally talking back and forth to the people in the boat or you're all listening to the same tunes together, singing along and having fun. You can tell when you look around the boat that there's so many good ideas from real riders, not from some engineer in a boat making place. It's hard to find a wakeboard boat that doesn't have a great stereo. They've got these big speakers up on the tower that, that, uh, that project the, the sound back to the rider while he's riding. And there's USB ports, so if your kids are in the back and they want to charge their electronics, which of course they always do, there are, there are about four or five USB ports scattered around the boat, so they've just spent a lot of time really analyzing and what, what people want on these things. Unlike, the, uh, unlike wakeboarding and skiing, it's, it's like you're doing it like 12, 13 miles per hour. So when you fall, you're not gonna get that same impact and water up your nose and hurts everywhere. 
Um, it's very easy to pick up. It's very hard to master, but, but anybody can pick it up pretty simply.